वेलकम बैक टू येट अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ माई स्पोकन इंग्लिश कोर्स विच इज एब्सोलूटली फ्री फॉर यू ऑल सो इफ यू हैव एंड वॉच द प्रीवियस एपिसोड ऑफ द स्पोकन इंग्लिश कोर्स देन आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट यू टू गो एंड वॉच दैट फर्स्ट एंड देन कम टू इट बिकॉज दैट्स कैन बी द एपिसोड टू एंड इन एपिसोड वन आई हैव मैंशन अबाउट ग्रामर वॉट इज ग्रामर एंड सम बेसिक पार्ट ऑफ स्पीच वी हैव डिस्कस लाइक नाउन प्रो नाउन एंड एक्सेट्रा In today's episode, I'm going to be continuing the basic grammar skills, which is uh, now we are going to be like talking about sentence structure. So today we are going to be talking about sentence structure. So beginning with subject and predicate, a basic sentence consists of a subject and a predicate. The subject is the person, thing, or idea that a uh, sentence is about while the predicate tells us something about the subject like usually what the subject does or is for example the cat chased the mouse isme the cat is a subject and chase the mouse is a predicate the cat subject okay chase the mouse predicate predicate tell, tells us about the subject second we are going to be discussing about what is a simple sentence simple sentences contain one independent clause which is the subject and the predicate for example she dances that's it that's the simple sentence it consists of a subject and a predicate she dances okay so uh, an independent clause is there it's called simple sentence then what is compound sentence so compound sentence consists of two independent clauses which is joined by a coordinating conjunction conjunction like and but or so far yet nor so these are the conjunctions that are joining the two independent clauses and this sentence is called compound sentences for example she dances comma and he sings okay so there are like two independent clauses joined by a coordinated conjunction which is or then we have complex sentences now what are complex sentences so these complex sentences is it it contains one independent clause and one dependent clause at least one dependent clause should be there what is a dependent clause something which cannot stand alone as a complete sentence so there should be at least one dependent clause for the sentence to be called complex for example when she dances comma he sings okay so there is a independent clause as well as a dependent clause now let's talk about punctuation punctuation marks such as periods exclamatory mark question mark semicolon colon full stop comma they help clarify the meaning and structure of sentences next we have subject verb agreement verbs must agree with their subjects in number singular or plural for example the cat which is singular chases the mouse chases plural the mouse singular for example the cat chases the mice the cat singular chases singular verb and mice is plural so this is subject verb agreement last but not the least we are going to be talking about capitalization and spelling so proper nouns are capitalized like name of a specific person name of a specific place name of a specific thing so these are called proper nouns and proper nouns should all, always be capitalized in capital letters spelling correctly ensures clarity in written communication so as i told you you all have to maintain a register for your spoken english course so that you can uh you know you can be a pro at the end of the whole course you have a whole register and you can revise it you know you can obviously revise by watching my videos again but you know if something is written you can revise it any time and it's useful information so better maintain a register as i have also i'm going to be like giving you some practice exercises so let's begin with the practice exercise for today 
Identify the parts of speech in the following sentence. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Now you have to tell me the parts of speech in the given sentence. I am giving you 5 seconds to do it. Actually, I am just not giving you 5 seconds. I am giving you time to pause and write down and then you can just start my video again. Okay, so I am going to be like telling, telling you the answers. Okay, so now I am going to be like telling you the answers. We have noun here as a part of speech. So noun is fox and dog. Fox, dog. These are nouns. Adjective, quick, brown, lazy. Quick, brown, lazy. We also have a verb here which is jumps. There is also a preposition which is over. Then we have an article which is the. There is also a pronoun here which is it. So, अगर आपने पहला वाला एपिसोड देखा हुआ है स्पोकन इंग्लिश कोर्स का तो ये आप ऐसे सॉल्व करेंगे बिकॉज दे आपको बस इसमें पार्ट ऑफ स्पीच बताना है पार्ट ऑफ स्पीच मैंने एक्सप्लेन कर दी है इससे पहले वाले एपिसोड में अगर आपने नहीं देखा है तो जाके देख लीजिए और एक बार अगर आपने देख लिया वो फिर आप ये सेंटेंस में से जितने भी पार्ट ऑफ स्पीच आ रहे हैं यू कैन क्लियरली आंसर दे Understanding basic grammar concepts improves writing skills and enhances communication clarity. Practice identifying parts of speech and sentence structure to strengthen your grammar proficiency. Then let's move towards the next point here um, in this topic called sentence structure. It's called subject verb agreement. In English grammar, subject and verbs must agree in numbers. This means singular subjects must have singular verbs and plural subjects must have plural verbs. For example, the cat is sleeping. Here, there is a singular subject, the cat and a singular verb which is is. Then, there is again another sentence which is the cats are sleeping. Here, the cats is a plural subject and are is a plural verb. This is what subject verb agreement is all about. Let's move towards the next topic. Pronoun antecedent agreement. Pronouns must agree with number, person and gender with their antecedents. Antecedents are the words which they refer to. For example, Sara loves her cats. So there is a singular antecedent and a singular pronoun. The second sentence is the students brought their books. There is like a plural antecedent, the student and a plural pronoun which is there. Okay, so time to talk about types of sentences. So this is going to be the last topic in episode 2 of the Spoken Grammar course. Uh, there's still uh, sentence structure is a long, uh, it's a long part. So I'm going to be uh, teaching more about it in the next episode. So the last topic here is types of sentences. Okay, so number one is declarative sentences. What are declarative sentences? As the name suggests, it declares something, right? So declarative sentences make statements or express opinions. For example, I enjoy reading books. So this is something that I'm like expressing my opinion. I'm like declaring something. I enjoy reading books. Normally declarative sentences end with like a full stop. Then next we have interrogative sentences. Interrogative sentences, they ask questions. For example, have you finished your homework? Question mark. So every interrogative sentence ends with a question mark. Then we have imperative sentences. What do they do? Imperative sentences give commands or make requests. For example, please pass the salt. Please pass the salt. So what I'm doing, I'm like making a request, please pass the salt. So that's an imperative sentence. Yeah. Okay, the last here is exclamatory sentence. Exclamatory sentences, they express strong emotions or feelings. Often they end with an exclamation mark. For example, what a beautiful sunset. What a beautiful sunset. Exclamatory mark. So yeah, and also imperative sentences, they generally end with a full stop. So these are the four types of sentences that I have mentioned and talked about. So I have like told you. Uh, so I'll be back with episode three in which I'm going to be talking about more about sentence structure, then modifiers, then active and passive. So yeah.
so be there don't forget to press the bell notification for updates of the next episode and yeah thank you so much for watching it i would like to see your comments thank you so much yeah bye bye happy learning keep learning